Hello, welcome to part two of the video, video series as part of the continuous change detection and classification module as part of the OpenMRV project. This video will demonstrate the advanced time series viewer for visualizing CCDC time series. The, video uh, the previous video demonstrated the simple time series viewer, which is a real quick and easy way to look at time series trajectories without very much, very many options in terms of you know, parameterization or whatnot. Um, this tool gives a little bit more flexibility in controlling CCDC parameters um, and is a great way to experiment with those parameters. Um, so the link to this can be found in the, the written documentation as part of this tutorial, as can all the links to the other applications. And so when you load the app, you should see something like this. You have the map, um, you have some parameters here on the left, and you have this empty panel at the bottom here. Um, and so what some of these parameters are, they're CCDC parameters. Um, these are described in the written documentation. Uh, they're also described in the uh, Google Earth Engine JavaScript API documentation. They could be found up here under docs. It's searching for CCDC. So in here, it grabs these parameters. Um, and so when you adjust these, this will, the next time you click on the map, um, it'll run CCDC with these corresponding parameters. And then the next section are uh, visualization parameters, which I'll demonstrate this in a second. And then there's some tools for just like adding extra things to the map, navigating to a certain lat long, um, things like that. And so in the previous video we worked in, um, I was demonstrated in Cambodia. So we'll go there again for this video um, and we'll demonstrate the latitude, longitude navigator down here just to go there real quickly. So I have these loaded up. And so when you click go, after putting in um, some coordinates, it'll go to a specific location. Um, and so just like in the the previous video, um, I'm changing the start and end date. So we have a shorter time period for demonstration just to make this all go a little bit quicker. Um, but you can go back as long as there's Landsat data. And so what happens when clicking on the map? And so this is an example that I found just looking around in the area. You could go, as I said, you could go anywhere where there's Landsat data. Um, but this is, this is an interesting example because there's a couple of changes we could look at. Um, so this is an area of agriculture, pastureland, maybe right on the edge of a forest. And so what we're looking at is the time series, the shortwave infrared band. The, the blue dots, those are Landsat art observations. The uh, squiggly lines, those are the harmonic regression models. Um, and so we can see when there's a change in the color of the lines or, you know, a break in the models, that corresponds to a spectral change. So we have pretty dark shortwave infrared data before around 2012. And then there's a spectral change in which the next model and the corresponding data is a lot brighter. And so forests are generally dark in this band. Um, and non-forest is generally brighter. So based off of this and the fact that it's located on the edge of a forest, um, we could probably say that this was a deforestation event. Uh, but then there's another change up here where it gets even brighter. So this could be a, you know, a new type of agriculture or you know, further clearing or something along those lines. Um, but we get click on these blue dots, the Lancet observations and the corresponding image will load. Um, it's often very cloudy. That's where I, there's all these gaps in the imagery. So this is kind of useless. But generally, if you click around, um, you can find an image that makes some sense. And so this one, you know, this missing data, these are still clouds. There's some missed clouds here. Uh, but we can see where I clicked here that this, this looks like it's probably for us. Um, and if we don't like this image stretch that we're looking at, um, we could change that over here in the visualization parameters. Um, so I'm gonna click on the map again, but it's worth just 
changing a couple of parameters, see if that does anything. Um, one thing that we could change is, you know, reducing the minimum observations threshold. So this defines how many observations needs, how many consecutive observations are needed to fly the change. Um, so how many consecutive observations that look like change need to occur before an actual change is uh, detected. So lowering this will result in more change. So we'll see what happens. Maybe nothing. Um, but this is this is how you would go through the process of changing parameters. And while we're at it, we could also change the visualization parameters to just have a, a standard red, green, blue. Um, so I, by default, it's near, uh, short of infrared, near infrared, red. Um, red, green, blue is you know, your standard um, high resolution base map is generally this. Uh, and it, this, these two boxes define the, the min and the maximum for the stretch. So it's in units of reflectance. And so I'm going to lower these just because in the red, green, blue channels, there's generally lower vegetation, at least in this, or excuse me, there's generally lower reflectance over these landscapes. So if we lower those and click on this, turn off the Landsat imagery. Um, and so this will take into account the parameters that are defined over here. So as we can see now there's a whole lot more, well now this is just a very messy time series. Um, there's a substantial amount of area with no model fit. Um, and so that tells me that this parameter change worked to, to reduce the, the model fit or and make it worse at least. Um, but you know while while we're here, we could say that you see that when we load now this image is in the stretch specified here. And there's a lot of different stretches. Um, you know, there's the different vegetation indices. Um, and then there are all these other parameters you could toy with. And yeah, so this is a great way to both explore the data a little bit more detail and also explore the CCDC parameters in a bit more detail. Um, and thanks, bye.